BBs are often criticized for being more difficult on road trips than gasoline cars. And it is true that if you're in an EV and you're on a road trip, the amount of time it's gonna take is gonna be a little bit longer and the inconvenience of charging still exists, especially if you're in a non-Tesla. If you're in a Tesla, really it's not an issue. And if you're in a non-Tesla, it's an issue now, but it's not gonna be an issue come the spring of 2024 after the uh, supercharger network opens and additional DC fast chargers are built out. However, what's often overlooked is that electric vehicles are by far a better vehicle for the daily grind and commuting to and from work. That is not brought up. Today, I'm gonna to go over the advantages of driving an electric vehicle for the 50 weeks of the year that you're not doing road trips. Most electric vehicles have a way of setting a timer. So when you're getting ready to depart, um, the environments can be engaged and your car can be set to the right temperature. For instance, in this car, there's a schedule that I could set in order to have the car cool down or heat it up. So when I depart, it's already set for the right temperature. It's pretty nice. Now, you might say that's a bit of a gimmick, but I don't know. You grow used to it. It's, it is a nice feature where I hop in my car and it's already got the air condition running and it's already cooled down. So when it's been, you know, 90 degrees throughout the night here in uh, the southern United States, I get to start my day with a nice cool car. Also, if it's been parked in a parking lot, I can flip the environment on as I'm coming out of the grocery store and the car will start to cool down. So when I get in and touch the uh, black surface from the steering wheel, my hands don't get blisters. All right, so this morning I'm taking you on my 30 mile one way trip into the office. I actually am a full remote worker with headquarters of my company in Memphis, Tennessee. But a couple of days of the week, I've have uh, provisions given for me at a local branch office um, where there's a office space with a desk set up for me. So I go in a couple days a week. I don't have to, I just actually find myself a little bit more productive when I go into the office. 30 miles one way means about 60 miles plus in two directions per day. A electric vehicle nowadays can go between 200 and 300 miles on a state of char on a uh, single battery charge. So there's no problem whatsoever getting to and from work and plenty other places with a single charge. So I don't have to charge at all. This is called a gas station, and the way it works is there's a pump that you could take petroleum product and put it into your car, and then burn the petroleum product and go to and from work. I haven't actually been to a gas station in years. In fact, this is the first time I've been here. Um, and there's a building over there, if you wanna put your diet at risk, they have uh, these evil things called donuts inside there, which are, are really frightening. So, gas stations, no longer a thing. This here is a place where you come and get oil changed in your car or with all the mechanical parts that are moving around inside your car and you get the inevitable break, breakdown, you can come here and the mechanics will fix the car for you. Again, not a thing with electric cars. No oil changes. Electric cars have two thirds fewer moving parts, so they really don't break down as much. Um, this car here hasn't broken down at all. We had a problem with the Cadillac. It's a brand new model, so it had a 12 volt thing, but we got it worked out. But the routine maintenance on electric vehicles basically doesn't exist. If you look in the Tesla owner's manual, um, it says there's basically no routine maintenance. You gotta rotate your tires, but that's about it. There's no oil changes. There's no flushing the fluids. There's no transmission things or anything like that with electric vehicles. So places like this, not a thing anymore. It always frustrated me when I woke up and on the floor of the garage was some kind of mystery fluid. And then I had to arrange
exchange time with my mechanic in order to bring the car in, lose the car for a couple of days while they figured out what, where the mystery fluid was coming from and then hit me with a repair bill, typically, I don't know, 600 bucks or whatever. With the electric vehicles, there are many fewer systems. There's no radiator, there's no oil pan or oil gaskets, there's no transmission or transmission fluid, there's no serpentine belt, uh, there's no cooling system. That whole concept just doesn't exist. There's no engine. Um, recently I was behind the wheel of an internal combustion engine car for the first time in a couple of years, and just the noise of the engine was very noticeable to me, and the vibration. Uh, electric cars are quiet, and the number of systems are far fewer. So that whole concept of pruning out the inevitable mechanic visits from my life is definitely a major advantage to an electric. All right, we're on the interstate now. Another thing electric vehicles have is something called instant torque. Instant torque is a great amount of fun during a daily commute. If I'm posting up next to a Camaro and he thinks he's all that, I'm about to show him different. This electric vehicle can go 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. It is ridiculously fast. Instant torque is something that an internal combustion engine car could only dream of having. It is frighteningly fast. Let me see if I can do it real quick. Yeah, so just went a little bit over the speed limit there, but you get the gist. else about my 30 mile commute, 60 miles round trip. This car can go about 240 miles on a charge, and let's just say 180, because you always want to leave a little bit of buffer. No one goes down to zero, and no one goes all the way up to 100, so let's just call it 180. So if you do the math there, that's three days I have before I even need to charge. And when we're talking about charging, it's not an effort. All I do is when I come home, I pull in the garage. Instead of going directly in to eat dinner, I divert and I grab the plug and I plug it in. The whole process takes about 15 seconds. Then when I come out the next morning, I do the same thing in reverse. I unplug and I put the cable back. Another 15 seconds. No gas station trips. Nothing like that. All right, so let's talk about the sacrifices you're gonna to have to make by going electric with the creature comforts on the interior of the car. Nope, none. This particular car that I'm driving is a Volvo XC40 Recharge 2022 Level 2 Plus trim. The only difference between this Volvo XC40 and the internal combustion Volvo XC40 is there's some badging on the side that says recharge and uh, the front grille instead of being perforated to let in air for the internal combustion engine is just a solid piece of plastic if you ever see a volvo and the front grille is just a solid piece of plastic that's one of the all-electric models so otherwise i mean it's exactly the same it's literally exactly the same as the other car. They just took out the engine and they put in electric motors and a uh, battery pack. You know, there's cup holders, there's a place for your iPhone, super comfortable chairs, heated seats, heating steering wheel, moon roof. There's no sacrifice going to electric. Every uh, brand that has electric models you'll find has all the same creature comforts that the internal combustion engine car. So there's no sacrifice whatsoever. Electric vehicles have something called regenerative braking, and when I was driving internal combustion engine cars, I was excited when the transition happened to actually disabling the internal combustion engine motor when you came up to a stop sign and came to a full stop. I thought that was a great efficiency. I was so excited. That way you're not burning gas when you're just sitting at a stop sign, right? Well. EVs take it even a step further. What happens in EVs is you actually create gasoline. You know, obviously it's not 
gasoline, but you create gasoline when you come to a stop. <clears throat> the way it works is the electric motor is basically run in reverse, and it creates <clears throat> energy that gets put back into the battery. So let's just say your gas tank indicator was going down. As you come to a stop, the regenerative braking fills it back up again. Holy crap, are you kidding? That is like the best invention in the history of inventions. I love it. So regenerative braking <coughs> is indicated on electric vehicles, typically with some little stick thing that will show you whether you're burning energy by accelerating or creating energy by stopping. And it's not something you really have to program. It's, it's always on. So anytime you take your foot off the gas and start slowing down, that regenerative braking starts putting energy back into your battery. Uh, it is really cool. Anyway, this is what it looks like. All right, so if you look at the little gold stick next to the letter D on the right-hand side, that's my uh, energy usage. If it's above the halfway point, I'm burning electricity. But if I let go of the gas like I just did, you can see I'm regenerating energy back into the battery pack. So that's how regenerative braking works. And in my opinion, for a thrifty person like myself, that is one of the best inventions ever. Look at that. I am generating gasoline. One other thing about regenerative braking, in situations like this, which is stop and go traffic, the efficiency of electric vehicles really starts to increase. Electric vehicles will burn through their batteries pretty quickly at a high speed just because they don't have transmissions. But down here at the stop and go range where um, traffic is congested and you're constantly hitting the accelerator and hitting the gas, an electric vehicle could basically do this all day long. The efficiency goes way up because you're constantly regenerating energy back into the battery pack and you're using very little acceleration. Uh, so for daily commutes, where you're going through congested pockets like this, an EV is far and away a better vehicle to drive. All right, so let's talk about fuel bill. <clears throat> if you have an electric vehicle, your electric bill is going to go up, assuming that you're charging at home. <clears throat> There's just no way about it. And if you're not charging at home, you're gonna use public <clears throat> charging infrastructure, which is uh, costly. And in some cases, public charging infrastructure <clears throat> can be at the same price as uh, gasoline. So you basically negate the effect of the lower cost of electricity versus gasoline. But if you have an electric car and you're charging at home, your electric bill is going to go up. However, your electric bill is going to go up less than the amount you used to spend in gas. So if that makes sense. So the electricity you're going to use and the cost for that electricity is going to be less than what you're replacing it with, which is the cost of gasoline. <clears throat> we have two electric vehicles. That's all me and my wife drive is electric vehicles. We basically charge them at home and uh, we have a 2400 square foot house. We keep our air conditioner at 66 degrees when we're sleeping. We like it nice and cold. That's just kind of who we are as people. And um, we live in the southern United States. And here's our electric bill. As you can see, it's not like $500 high because you've got an electric vehicle. It's gonna go up a little bit. Uh, when my wife first got her Tesla, the salesperson answered her question about how much it costs to charge the electric vehicle. He said, it's about the same as running your clothes dryer. And I found that to be the case. Uh, they use the same outlets, the NEMA 1450 outlets. Um, which are those big dryer outlets. They use the same outlets. They run for about the same amount of time, you know, two, three, four, five hours, whatever. You know, if you're doing laundry on the weekend, you're gonna run your dryer through a couple of cycles, depending on your whites and colors. 
So that's a very good analogy. If you want to figure out how much more in electricity you're going to spend with an electric vehicle, it's basically the same as running your clothes dryer. the highway making the last stretch into the office let's go over the advantages of an electric vehicle for the 50 weeks out of the year that you're not doing road trips and you're schlepping to and from work as a corporate slave one regenerative braking best invention in the history of inventions especially if you're a thrifty person like me being able to regenerate gasoline into your gas tank just by taking your foot off the accelerator super cool two instant torque Yesterday, I was cruising down the highway and there was a guy in a Lamborghini. And I thought to myself, Walter, be nice. You smoke that guy in his $200,000 Lamborghini in your little Volvo, he's going to cry. Don't do that. But anyway, when I want my instant torque because some person is being an, uh, an aggressive driver or whatever, or I just need super acceleration, I've got ridiculous acceleration at the touch. I dropped the hammer on this thing, my head slamming back into the headrest, and I am going at race car speeds. Three, not stopping at gas stations anymore. Gas station stops are gonna be pruned right out of your life. You're not gonna be doing that nonsense anymore. Nor are you gonna be spending money at gas stations. You'll fuel up at home by plugging in, or if you're living in an apartment or other multi-tenant dwelling, you'll charge at a DC fast charger instead. Four, reliability and lack of routine maintenance. I'm not gonna get oil changes anymore. Basically, the only time you're gonna go to places like that is when it's um, due for your tags to get renewed and you need to get an inspection. They still have to check, at least in my state, they need to check whether or not your turn signals work, uh, your power steering works, brake works, so they, you go through the, the vehicle inspection process, but otherwise you're not going to places like that. Car doesn't break down because it's got two-thirds fewer moving parts. You don't wake up to mystery oil on your garage floor when you're trying to get to work and then spend the day wondering if your car is going to make it back home again because it's electric. And as long as you're not going more than 250, 300 miles in a single day, you're not going to run out of juice. So all in all, for the 50 weeks out of the year that you're not doing road trips, there is really no question. An electric vehicle is by far the way to go. And the reason why the number one car on the planet is electric vehicle, the Tesla Model Y, I don't believe it's because people are trying to decarbonize the planet. I think the word is out that electric vehicles are the way to go. And I've definitely found that to be the case. I'm not going back to internal combustion engine cars anymore. Um, I love my EV. Um, being able to fuel it at home and uh, being able to uh, have a super reliable car that's not constantly breaking down, I'm on board. Anyway, thanks for watching.